Hello. In this video, I cover 11 techniques and tips to help you paint better trees in your watercolour landscape paintings. Trees are in just about every landscape, so it's important that you know how to draw and paint them correctly. There are many different types of trees with a large variety of shapes. Some are quite regular in form, while others are more irregular and have lots of gaps in their foliage. Some are evergreen and others lose their leaves in autumn. Some are tall and others short. We are going to look at a number of key shapes so that you can easily add them to your paintings, wherever you live. I hope that by watching this video to the end, you can pick up some tips that will make your painting of trees easy for you so that you can create better paintings. If you have any tips that you feel I may have missed, please add them in the comment section below so that everyone else can learn too. When you're drawing a tree, the trunks don't look like that. They're basically mostly parallel, like this. They might connect wine out a little bit near the base. And then when the tree starts to branch off like this, to make sure the tree continues to look right and doesn't look top heavy, just as a guide, what I normally recommend is if this is the thickness of the trunk, we'll call that T, then this the thickness of this branch and the thickness of this branch, when you add them together, should equal this thickness. So we'll call that T2. T3, sorry for the algebra. So the thickness of the trunk is equal to T2 plus T3. And then that continues. So if you branch off here, this thickness here will be roughly equal to this thickness plus this thickness there. And if you do that, your tree will look balanced, basically. I think that's the, the key thing. So keep that in mind. Now, when you're painting trees, something else to keep in mind is look at the tree as a whole rather than concentrating on the little detail, okay? So what I mean by that, if you're painting a eucalypt, for instance, and you, know, you look at the angle of the trunk, and then you, you look at the big shapes of the foliage. And you don't worry too much about the little detail. If you create an overall interesting shape, then your tree is more likely to have success. you draw a very boring tree, even if you draw it well, it, it won't look good in your landscape. Okay, so look at the big picture. Don't worry about the leaves and the small details. Some of that you can add later if you need to, and we'll talk about detail later in this video. When painting trees or any object in the landscape, the direction of the light is very important, so you have to keep that in mind while you're working. One tip I give to my new students is they mark somewhere on the edge of the paper, preferably on a piece of tape, where the light is coming from. If you're working from a reference where it has poor light, it might be a photo you've taken on an overcast day and you want to brighten things up a bit. If you don't mark on your paper or on the edge of your paper where the light's coming from, it's possible you can get confused. And I've seen paintings where an artist has got light coming from multiple directions, which can be very confusing to the viewer. So when you're painting foliage, to give it some form, I recommend you mix three puddles of paint, a light tone, a mid-tone and a dark tone and it's that variation in tone that helps give form to your tree. So let's mix three little puddles of paint and a smaller one for the 
trunks and branches. Start with your lighter tones. I'll use some Oriolan, you could use some Windsor Lemon, any sort of cool leaning yellow will do. And some Cobalt Turquoise to give us that green. Good, and that's a nice light tone. And for the mid-tone, same colours, only a lot more raw umber in this mix. Now this is just one idea for mixing your greens, okay? Um, and a lot depends on what you're painting. These greens might work well with um, eucalypts because they, they tend not to have very, very bright foliage unless it's quite new foliage. But if you were painting something like a blue spruce or something like that, well then obviously you're not going to use these same greens for that. But you will still mix a light tone, a mid tone and a dark tone. That's a bit too dark so I'll add some more water to it. Good. And then for our dark tone I'll just use some French ultramarine and raw umber. Don't need as much of that. If you have trouble mixing greens, I have a video on the subject on my channel and I'll place a link in the description below so that you can have a look at that if you want. For the branches and the trunks, for this exercise I'm just going to mix a dark brown. Just some burnt sienna with some French ultramarine. I won't make that too dark at this stage. When we come to painting, we've got the direction of the light. I'll pick up some of my light tone, and I use the light tone to basically create the shape of the foliage. And I pick up some of the paint, drag the brush to the edge of the palette. This is a small painting we're doing here, so I I'm not going to use a very big brush. This is my size 8 brush. There's my thumb. I just sort of have a medium sized hand and you can see roughly just how long the hairs on the brush. They're not very long. And I want to use the texture of this rough paper along with the angle of the brush to create the impression of foliage and leaves. I don't want to paint every individual leaf my brush is almost parallel to the paper and I bring it down and just as it touches the paper I lift it a fraction so that these few hairs, see the point's not touching the paper, it's just these few hairs that are creating the foliage, that and the texture of the paper. So this is a eucalypt, which is a relatively unbalanced tree, and I think that's what gives a lot of eucalypts their character, the fact that the foliage isn't always symmetrical around the trunk, and the trunk itself quite often has a lean to it. So I've created the shape of my foliage with the light tone, and I've left lots of gaps, or what we would call bird holes. So I've created the shape of the foliage. The light's coming from here, so now I'll pick up my mid-tone, have about the same amount of paint in my brush and in some of these areas we will have the mid-tone. We're using the same technique and then I'll go into the, the darkest tones and sometimes I'll just use the tip of my brush to, to you know, drop some darks in or I can still use the same technique. If this is a bigger painting, I would use the same technique of holding my brush almost parallel to the paper to put in the darks. There might be a little bit here. I don't want to put too many darks, however, because it can overpower the shape. And, and if it's all dark tones, then we've lost our light. I want to keep the light in this subject. Then pick up some of the paint for the trunk.
there we go throw in some branches when you paint trees like this you want to paint them in a relatively loose fashion so they still look painterly but but are obviously a tree right so there's the foliage the trunk now if the light is coming from here the trunk will have a shadow side so we'll just put that in and then also there's a shadow of the tree on the ground like this depending on where the lights coming from the shadow will be long or um, or short and it won't look like a this shape flattened because we're, we're looking at it at an angle um, and you'll have the longer shadow away from the light and that'll do for this segment I really just wanted to use this to talk about the light that's one of the key things to keep in mind when you're painting trees and shrubs in addition to using the side of your brush you can also use the point of your round brush to create shapes in particular trees. I'm now going to show you how I use my round brush when painting conifers. When you're painting a conifer, look at the basic shape of the tree and move your brush in a way that mimics that shape. If I was going to paint, say, some sort of pine tree, I could just flick the brush to the side. and obviously it's going to get bigger and more solid lower down even here you would leave a few little gaps in the foliage and there we have some form of conifer. Now I haven't bothered about indicating the light here. I was just interested in showing you the technique of just quickly flicking the brush to either side to create this sort of broken edge just as you lift the brush off the paper. I'm going to show you how to make the branches in your trees look more realistic. Mix some paint, colours aren't important. Just some French ultramarine burnt sienna is what I've got here. Instead of just drawing your trunk like this, and then your branches like this, make them look a little bit more interesting and realistic draw your branch sorry draw your trunk and then you draw your branch pull the brush back a fraction and then change direction see how that looks more interesting a connection than that do the same here pull the brush back a fraction change direction and then you can apply it here, pull it back a bit. And this looks more interesting than this ordinary shape. Doesn't matter which brush you use, if you were using a rigger, same thing, we'll start the trunk down below, push the brush back a little bit, change direction, push it back a bit, change direction, back a bit. I 
I'm now going to show you how to use a fan brush to create palm trees and conifers. If we look at a palm frond or leaf, it has a, a section that is relatively sharp and then the, the rest of the leaf comes downward. So we can use the fan brush to do that. Drag it and then drag it down. Drag it. We drag the brush and then lift the brush off to create the edges of the palm leaf there. Then you can just get a round brush don't want a lot of paint so I usually just drag the brush on a scrap piece of paper to, s to get rid of most of the paint. Sorry, it leaves behind the impression of the texture on the palm trunk. We'll use the same brush when we're painting conifers and trees similar to conifers like the Australian she-oak which isn't an oak and it's also not a conifer but it has similarities in its basic shape. I'll put a vertical shape there, just little flicks Again, we're not trying to be totally botanical about this, but at the same time, we want some nice variety in the shape of our conifer. What we don't want is to end up with a conifer that looks more like a teepee, like that. This is a lot more interesting than something that's this shape. Trees have gaps in them. They don't stop at a sharp edge, like this example here. I'm often asked, do I paint the branches and trunks first when painting trees, or do I paint the foliage first? The true answer is it depends on the painting. However, usually I start with the foliage and create an interesting shape for the foliage, and then I'll paint the branches and the trunk. In a few cases, however, I will start with the trunk, maybe not all the branches, but one or two branches, and then paint the foliage. The key thing however is if I paint the foliage first I always paint the branches while the foliage is still wet and the same if I paint the branches first I'll paint the foliage while the branches are still wet. That gives me a better connection between the foliage and the branches and the trunk. So let's just mix some little puddles of paint Again, for this exercise, the colours aren't that important. Just mixing three different puddles, light, medium and dark tones. And then over here, I'll mix colour for the branches, primarily French ultramarine and burnt sienna. This colour is fine for this exercise, but obviously if you are painting a tree in more detail, you would take more notice as to what colour you're going to use for the branches and the trunk. If we paint the foliage first, something like that, 
I might throw in some mid-tones and even a little bit of dark. If I go into the trunk and, and branch colour, we'll paint the trunk and see how I've painted into the wet paint. Same with the branches. And what that does is it lets some of the paint from the foliage and the branches and the trunk intermingle and you get a much better connection. So if I was to paint the foliage here, and then if I wait till it dries, let me go dry that. So you can see here, by painting the trunk and the branches after the foliage is dry, you don't get a very good connection. The foliage and the branches and the trunk look disconnected, whereas here they have a better connection. And in real life, you know, because the mass of leaves aren't one flat shape, there'll be little gaps in them. So if you saw the trunk or a branch, with leaves in front of it, you'd see glimpses of the trunk or the branches through the foliage and that's what this technique here does. It, it mimics real life much better than this technique here. A fan brush can also be used to create trees similar to poplars. To give you an example of that, I'll mix some autumn colours maybe some cad yellow, or some cad orange. We'll have a little bit of brown for the branches and the trunk, so for that I'll just use some cobalt blue and burnt sienna. Maybe even some scarlet lake, a bit of permanent rose. And we'll throw in some burnt sienna in there as well. Just, you know, typical earth colours. Um, I'll have a small puddle of green because even when the tree is changing colour, there's still a period of time when the green is still also showing. Just a little bit of aureolin and raw umber and a little bit of cobalt turquoise. That will do. This is just a small example. Again, I'll start with my lightest tone. I don't want a very drippy brush. I don't want the paint to drop out of the brush. I'll hold the brush vertical. So the poplars are quite a narrow tree. And little dabs here and there. There's lots of gaps in the tree. Start with that, then I'll go into some orange. Then maybe a little bit of red here and there. Then I'll pick up some of the branch and trunk colour. This is a very simple rendition of this tree. I'm 
some of the branches will also have lost their leaves at some point. And then there'll be a shadow. Let's say the light's coming from over here. But if this tree will have a shadow there. I'll quickly mix some shadow colour. Just some French ultramarine in this case, a little bit of permanent rose, tiny bit of burnt sienna, maybe not that much. There we go. And again, if the light's coming from here, there'll be areas you know closer to the trunk that'll be in shadow, and opposite the light, there'll be areas that are in shadow there. There you go. That's just a simple uh, example of how to use the fan brush to create a tree similar to a poplar. Another technique you can use to create foliage is to use a sea sponge. So this is a sea sponge here. The ones I like to use are those that have these nice spiky bits on them. The sea sponge is actually quite um, hard when it's dry, and you dip it in water, leave it in there for probably about 15 to 20 seconds. And when it comes out, it's very soft. What I like to do is as I'm creating the foliage, I like to move it around. So I'm using different sections to vary the shapes that I create. I particularly like using it for autumn colors. So I'll start with some cad yellow, and you can see the paint sitting on the brush. You don't want to press too hard because you still want to leave lots of gaps in your foliage. Something like that, and then I'll go into another colour. In this case, just like we did with the poplar, we'll use some cad orange. And even some of the reds. A little bit of permanent rose, scarlet lake, and burnt sienna. The sea sponge holds a lot of paint. You can see when I squeeze it just how much paint comes out. Let's grab some of the green colour. You can pre-mix your colours. Obviously I'm just using the sea sponge itself to mix these colours. So I'm going to put a little bit of green here and there. And then we'll, we'll go back to a round brush to put the branches in. I'd like to do this while the foliage is still wet. This is drying a little bit too fast. I can fix that by just going back in. Let's pick up some of the yellow. And quickly, while the branches are still wet, we'll drop in some of the other color.
because I'm just painting on dry paper here and these are small shapes. The paint's drying a bit too fast. So that's how you use a sea sponge to create foliage. We're now going to spend a few minutes talking about how trees can add depth to your painting. So let's assume we are painting a, a landscape. We've got some hills in the distance and we've got a tree in the foreground. So this is our horizon. We've got some sort of tree here. And if this is our horizon line or what we would call eye level, as the trees move further away from us, provided they're the same size tree, so if this tree is, you know, 50 foot high, if I'm going to draw another 50 foot high tree way in the distance, it will, um, it won't look as big as this because of what we call linear perspective. And the key thing is this distance from that horizon line to where the tree erupts or connects to the ground. So if there's a tree somewhere in between these, again same size tree, let's put one here, and again the, the distance between the base of the tree and the horizon line is less than this one in the foreground but it's more than this one in the distance. And this is really important. If I wanted to draw something near this tree, say a small cow, by drawing the cow's legs touching the ground the same distance from the horizon as this tree, we place this cow near that tree. If we had cows in the distance, another one here, or one, the cow would be smaller, so you've got to keep that in mind. But you can see how now this cow is further away, or appears further away than this cow on this tree, because it's closer to this horizon line. So this is very important to keep that in mind. Something else to think about while I have this here, obviously if you've got a tree and you've got a cow next to it, you have to give some thought to the size of the cow. If I was to draw a cow this big, then all of a sudden, instead of this being a tree, it's or a big tree, it's just going to look like a, a very spindly one. So you have to keep relative sizes of, of objects in mind when laying out your scene. In a few cases, you may want to indicate a few individual leaves. This doesn't happen often because with trees that are in the middle distance and beyond, you really can't see individual leaves. Uh, what you think might be an individual leaf will still be a clump of leaves. However, say you are walking down the side of the hill and you're looking through some trees at the vista beyond. Well, in that case, you may actually see a few individual leaves. So I'm just going to show you how I would handle that. Let's get the fan brush out.
not pressing very hard with the fan brush. I don't have to paint every leaf, just enough leaves that it reads like there's leaves there. If you enjoy this video and have not yet subscribed to my channel, please hit the like and subscribe buttons and hit the notification bell so that you'll be advised of every new video I produce. I look forward to seeing you for the next one.